Stephen Joseph Cannell was an American television producer, writer, novelist, occasional actor, and founder of Cannell Entertainment and the Cannell Studios. After starting his career as a television screenwriter, Cannell created or co-created several dozen successful TV series from the 1970s to the 1990s, often with his creative partner Frank Lupo. Cannell's creations include The Rockford Files, The A-Team, Renegade, The Greatest American Hero, 21 Jump Street, and The Comish. He also wrote novels, notably the Shane Scully mystery series. Early life Cannell was born in Los Angeles and raised in nearby Pasadena. He was the son of Carolyn and Joseph Knapp Cannell. Joseph owned the highly successful interior decorating company Cannell & Chaffin. Cannell struggled with dyslexia in school, but did graduate from the University of Oregon in 1964 with a Bachelor of Science degree in journalism. At UO, he joined the Sigma Chi fraternity. The 2009 documentary Dyslexia. The movie features an interview with Cannell, in which he discusses his struggles with dyslexia and how he managed to be such a successful writer despite his difficulties reading. During the interview, he mentions how he used to hire typists to overcome his spelling problem, as he refers to his dyslexia, but also describes how he feels his condition has enriched his life. Career after college, Cannell spent four years working with the family business before selling his first script to the Universal series It Takes a Thief in 1968. He was quickly hired by Universal Television, the television production branch of Universal Studios and was soon freelance writing for such other crime shows as Ironside and Columbo. In 1971, he received a telephone call from friend Herman Saunders who was the producer on Jack Webb's police series Adam 12. They needed a script right away and Saunders asked if Cannell would be interested in writing it. He delivered what they wanted in one day, his first full-time gig, and was soon hired as story editor of the series, then in its fourth season, until 1973. For Universal Television, Cannell created or co-created Chase, The Rockford Files, Beretta, City of Angels, and Bob Bob Black Sheep. He won the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series in 1978 for The Rockford Files. In a 2002 interview, Cannell described his early financial arrangements, saying that at Universal, I signed a deal as a head writer to make $600 a week. I was the cheapest writer on the lot. It was the lowest deal you could do by Writers Guild standards. But I'd been working for my dad for $7,000 a year. I was at Universal for eight years and I never renegotiated my deal but once. It was late in my arrangement with Universal. There was one thing in my deal that my agent had managed to get in there, I had good fees for my pilots. The reason they did it is that they never thought I was going to write a pilot. So they'd give me $70,000 to write a two-hour pilot and a $100,000 production bonus if it ever got made. Then I became the hottest pilot writer at Universal. I was writing two or three pilots a season. I was making $400,000 a year in pilot fees. In 1979, Cannell left Universal and formed his own company, Stephen J. Cannell Productions. For the first few years, Cannell's office was located on the lot at Paramount Studios in Hollywood, though his earlier work at Universal was still distributed by MCA Universal. Cannell's first series under his new banner was Ten Speed and Brown Shoe, and was soon followed by The Greatest American Hero, The Quest, The A-Team, Hardcastle and McCormick, Riptide, and Hunter. Cannell offices relocated to larger facilities on Hollywood Boulevard in 1983. In 1986, Cannell was co-founder, along with TriStar Pictures and Wit, Thomas Productions, of syndicated distributor Tele Ventures. In the late of 1988, Wit, Thomas Productions was yanked from the Tele Ventures venture, ceding it to Walt Disney Television, and sold its reins to Cannell. On July 11, 1990, both TriStar and Cannell dissolved the Tele Ventures joint venture and TriStar sold its shares to Stephen J. Cannell Productions and Tele Ventures became Cannell Distribution Co. Also in 1986, with a favorable exchange rate between the U.S. and Canadian dollars being a win-win for U.S. producers, Cannell decided to shoot his new series Stingray in Toronto. However, so many producers were shooting in Toronto that no crews were available to man any additional productions. Consequently, Cannell shot the first seven episodes of Stingray's second season in Calgary with the remaining eight episodes being shot in Vancouver. His first series to entirely be shot in Vancouver was 21 Jump Street, the highest-rated show of the new Fox Network's first season. With more and more series being shot in Vancouver, Cannell said, we were fighting with everybody for locations and stage space. His solution was to build a new, state-of-the-art facility, the North Shore Studios, on 13 acres with 100,000 square feet of office space and seven soundstages. The series 21 Jump Street was soon followed by J.J. Starbuck, Wise Guy, Unsub, Top of the Hill, Booker, Broken Badges, Palace Guard, Scene of the Crime, The Comish, Street Justice, Silk Stockings, The Hat Squad, Renegade, Cobra, and Hawkeye. A number of television films were also shot in Vancouver by Cannell's production company. On July 31, 1995, New World Communications acquired his Cannell Entertainment production company. Cannell then founded the Cannell Studios. One of the first shows produced by the newly established Cannell Studios was the short-lived but critically acclaimed corporate drama Profit. 
Cannell created or co-created nearly 40 television series, mostly crime dramas. In the process, he had by his own count, scripted more than 450 episodes, and produced or executive produced over 1,500 episodes. In May 1988, Cannell was a panelist in the John Davidson edition of Hollywood Squares. He also served as the host of the 1991-92 series Scene of the Crime, a mystery anthology series with a repertory cast, and of the 1995-1996 syndicated documentary series U.S. Customs Classified, focusing on the work of the U.S. Customs Service. Cannell also acted occasionally, including a recurring role as main antagonist, Dutch, Dixon on his series Renegade. He also took a turn in an episode of Silk Stockings, in which the script called for one character to tell him, you look just like that writer on TV, to which Cannell's character responds, I get that all the time. Cannell appeared as himself in the 2009 pilot of the ABC show Castle and again in two episodes of season two. Along with James Patterson, Dennis Lehane, and Michael Connolly, he was one of Castle's poker buddies. In season three, following Cannell's death, an empty seat at the poker table is described as Cannell's, and remains empty for a full year in tribute to him. Starting in 1995, Cannell turned his attention to writing novels. His first novel, The Plan, was released in 1997 by Avon. As of 2010, he had written 18, 11 of which featured the character of Detective Shane Scully of the Los Angeles Police Department. Seven are standalone novels. The last in the series, Vigilante, was released December 2011 by St. Martin's Press. Cannell's TV series The A-Team was remade into a 2010 feature-length film. Cannell served as a producer and creative consultant for the project. His other series 21 Jump Street was made into a 2012 feature by Columbia Pictures and Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, and into the sequel 22 Jump Street, which was released in June 2014. Personal life Cannell married his high school sweetheart, Marcia, in 1964. He asked her to go steady in the eighth grade. Together they had two daughters, Tanya and Chelsea, and two sons, Cody and Derek. Derek died in 1981 at age 15 when a sand castle he was building at the beach collapsed and suffocated him. This tragedy had occurred during the filming of the Captain Bellybuster episode of The Greatest American Hero. Actor William Catt wrote a song for Cannell, titled, Cody the Cowboy. Cannell was so touched by this gift that he named his next son Cody in honor of the song. Cannell was dyslexic, and was a spokesman on the subject. According to an episode of Paul Harvey's The Rest of the Story, Cannell frequently had to dictate ideas or even complete scripts with the help of his personal secretary Grace Curcio, an employee of 20 years. Following Grace's retirement in 2003, Kathy Eziso became his editor and executive assistant. He discussed his experiences as a dyslexic in the 2009 documentary Dyslexia, the movie. Cannell wrote on a typewriter, an IBM Selectric, when not dictating to an assistant, and only used a computer for research purposes. Cannell died on September 30, 2010, from complications of melanoma. He is interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles.